Hey y'all, this is Porty1119 with Head Frame Hunters. Also got uh, Gail, aka Gizmo, along with us. We're here in southwestern Colorado at the Gold Eagle Mine. This is a uranium vanadium mine. It was uh, worked via a vertical shaft. Actually, a pretty nice vertical shaft. We'll show you that in a minute. And uh, I believe this was last worked in the 80s or 90s. I haven't pulled uh, MSHA DRS data on it yet. So this was started off as a, uh, a rail mine. But later on, I think this shaft was then uh, used for ventilation, maybe man hoisting for some other mines here. And I'll explain that to you uh, over here. Go by one of the equipment bays. So you see here we've got. What does this look like? This looks like a 36-inch gauge rail. All right, ran out along uh, this retaining wall, and what would have been done here? There were three different uh, bins. That probably would have held waste, high grade, low grade, or maybe uh, from different lease tracts. But uh, anyway, some way to differentiate material coming out of the mine. And it would have been scooped up by a wheel loader, loaded into a truck, and trucked to a mill. Uh, maybe a mill in uh, White Mesa or Moab. I think there might be one over on, there might have been one on the Colorado side as well. But that's uh, obviously an orphan section of track. So then we come into the compressor bay. It's a Gardner Denver. Appears to be a rotary screw compressor, electrically powered. There's the heat exchanger or radiator for it. See, it's an Electra Saver from the Industrial Machinery Division. There's that heat exchanger. And oh look at that. She's only uh 8195 hours new. If that's a true reading, that's not a whole lot. That's four years of operation running uh yeah, running 40 hour weeks, and I'm guessing that this was run more than 40 hours. Looks like uh, air solenoids to control a lot of it. Those are little pneumatic uh, rams. And somebody ripped off the, the air cleaner. And this door has been splintered. Now we come into uh, the really cool stuff. The, uh, the hoist house, and would you look at that? The hoist is still there. There's your electric motor. It's only a single drum hoist. It the, smells like hantavirus in here. Yeah, it smells like a mixture of hantavirus and gear oil. And I'm not sure if it'll appear so. It's uh, level one, level two, level three pocket. So they were probably using a series of ore passes to move muck from the one and two to the three levels. Look at you can see the, the head frame in the cage. And this is where the, the hoistman's seat would have been. It's not there anymore. That lower off hoist. Pedals. And then, uh, this would be the, the brake lever. So look at that. Strategic beer command. And, uh, nice little miner's graffiti of what appears to be a cocker spaniel on the, the side of the wall. There's a lot of your electrical disconnects. It looks like a tag board. We'll take a look at that in a minute. 
The electric motor is a Westinghouse. And it really appears like uh, this mine was shut down with an intention to come back. I know, uh, you know, I don't think that my young buggy came from this complex, but some other equipment that I have did come from this complex when it was surplused out a few years ago. The board is kind of cool. They had uh, three spots for visitor tags and then only eight slots for miners tags. And uh, half a dozen for managers. Might have had as many mi managers underground as miners sometimes, which is... That fits. I've worked mines where there's more white pickups running around than there are loaders. But yeah, only eight guys a shift max. So it was a small little operation here. But a nicely put together one. Look at the size of that pillar block bearing on the hoist. That's a monster. And somebody uh, pulled the, the chain off for the, the level indicator. You can see there's a 90 degree gearbox in the base of the level indicator, which was then tied to uh, that output sprocket on, uh, on the hoist axle itself. And the gear ratio there would control the relationship between the two. See, those are your uh, your disc brakes for the hoist itself. Or, no, no, I guess those would be drum brakes. Wonderful. I love drum brakes. They're totally not the worst form of brakes ever invented. On that happy note, let's go take a look at the shaft. Here's looking right back out at the hoist house and then we come over to this pretty nice head frame. It's got uh, double ventilation stacks which should illustrate the importance. Importance might not be a sufficiently strong word. The criticality of proper ventilation in a uranium mine. Kerr McGee and company killed a, a whole lot of Navajo miners by uh, playing dumb about the ventilation requirements for uranium. So unfortunately, uh, we checked, there is a, a master lock on the, the manway hatch, which is a damn shame, because look at that we got caged steel ladders with landings every 20 feet, and oh, it, that just looks, that just looks perfect. I'd love to descend that. This is a very nice shaft. It's a concrete collar, circular shaft with timber lagging, which is an interesting combination. I've, I've not seen that before. Shaft diameter is probably only the order of 15 feet. This is a good size shaft. There's a little more rail set in line with the shaft. Gotta wonder if there was rail up on this structure. We have a, another cool feature, a big hydraulic, eh, probably pneumatic ram. I haven't found a hydraulic pump around here, and there's a big compressor. So let's call it a pneumatic ram that opens and closes the shaft door. So the the shaft door can be closed in a or closed mechanically remotely to control access to it. Then there's your uh, your swing gate. This is the skip. And then up on top of it is the cage, which has uh, has its own doors. That cage is probably three feet by seven feet. You'd only fit three guys in there. Four if they're they really like each other. <laughs> um, here's your your bell, your bell cable. I don't think this is gonna work. Damn. Yeah, it's electrically powered. <laughs> that sucks. 
cool if the bell still worked. What? This uh, section of paneling was removed so we can take a look down there. And you know our uh, critical last step of exploring a uh, an inaccessible shaft is to throw a rock down it, characterize depth, and see if it's flooded. So this looks like a suitable rock. Reach over, let her fly. It's still hitting stuff. Miss one thing with the hoisting theory. This uh, this dump frame on the back side would have been used to uh, dump the skip directly out to uh, that little bin, whatever you want to call it. Then over there, there's a decent sized air receiver tank. So I, I suppose uh. There may well have been some hoisting out of here more recently. Uh, if you're hearing Gail over there, we found multiple sets of mountain lion tracks and some probable bear tracks. So uh, we, we took precautions, but that's always a, a possibility to run into those over there. And then that's your little transformer. So that's about it for the, the gold eagle mine. This is a uh, episode one in our little uranium mini series so as always this has been porty 1119 with head frame hunters thank y'all very much for watching and see you next time